Welcome to In Conversation with King's Legal Clinic. To start us off, Sue, how do plastics link to climate change? So everyone knows about plastics are in the sea, plastics are in the river, plastics are in landfill, um, strangling our seabirds, choking turtles uh, and killing seals. But we don't necessarily think about it as a health issue or in particular as a climate issue. Actually, plastics are one of the major emitters uh, or causes of greenhouse gases to the extent that in the next 30 years they could contribute to 75% of greenhouse gases in the EU. Preparing for this talk, I took a look at a really uh, great report from the Centre um, of International Environmental Law. It's a US NGO based in Washington DC and I'll ask the organizers to share a link to that report and I'd really ask you to take a look at it. They think that 10 to 13 percent of greenhouse gases um, will be caused by plastics up till 2050. So how do they cause climate change? Well first of all they're extracted um, through fossil fuel extraction, then there's transport, there's refining, there's manufacturing, even recycling causes greenhouse gas emissions from plastic. So when you think you're being virtuous with that bottle from your water or your lunch, um, remember that that may be causing emissions. And the degrading of plastics when it's thrown into landfill at the end of the process also causes methane gases. It's even thought that plastics in the ocean can interfere with the ocean's ability to absorb carbon dioxide. Um, so I think that's probably enough reasons to be going on with um, to show how plastics are contributing to climate change. And that's why we chose them this year to be at the heart of the Global Day of Action on Climate Change to raise awareness about that issue. What role do lawyers have in addressing this issue? So there are so many ways in which law students, young lawyers, old lawyers can get involved in this. Obviously, there's on the personal level when we go into the supermarket and think about buying something that's uh, contained um, in single use plastic. Um, at a political level, there are opportunities through our trade union groups or through political parties to try to put pressure on and raise awareness, even if we're talking to the neighbour, our friends, our family. But I think more importantly, there is scope at um, a legal level in our legal work. And in the clinic at the moment, for example, we much of our work on climate change is focused on extractive companies um, that relate to oil and gas tackling uh, proposals to start new gas uh, and oil uh, exploration, especially in, in the global south. We're working on a case at the moment relating to um, a, a mining company, extractive company in Serbia, where the reason for the opposition is uh, pollution that will be caused. But at the same time, these fossil fuel uh, corporations are the ones that are um, leading to plastic production or, or involved in plastics productions. And so there's a good reason to be challenging them legally. At the same time, lawyers may working in corporate law firms may be involved in advising government um, about policy in relation to climate change, uh, or students may be involved in climate change activism. Uh, where there's discussion about um, the 1.5% goal. And it's important to think about the practicalities of fossil fuel and plastics when we're contributing to those campaigns. There's awareness raising that I've al already mentioned. Uh, there's disvestment from fossil fuel companies in terms of our universities. Um, pensions and other investments and then there are consumer campaigns to try to stop uh, supermarkets and manufacturers using so much plastic. Um, 
So I think there are many different ways in which a law student, even if they don't have a human rights and environment clinic like we have at King's, can get involved uh, in large or small ways to challenge um, this, the impact plastics on climate change. What have you found most challenging in your work? So the reason to have a legal clinic at, at King's is that we're trying to deliver access to justice whilst uh, students are uh, getting an opportunity to engage in actual legal cases as a way of deepening their legal knowledge. And perhaps nowhere is access to justice such an issue as in environmental law, um, climate justice, environmental justice. Domestically, it's the one area that has never really had access to legal aid. So there just isn't funding for environmental cases. And people crowdfund to, um, for example, stop fracking in the UK in the past or to stop a new fossil fuel uh, company, but um, the, the, there are very high cost risks if you lose those kind of cases. And that issue is multiplied uh, in the other countries that we're working in. For example, we're trying to stop um, deforestation in Uganda. We're working in relation to uh, fossil fuel companies um, in India. And there the community have really zero access to climate justice. So I'd say that's our biggest barrier and the one that the legal clinic is trying to tackle in a very tiny way to seek funding and provide additional resources so that there is some kind of climate justice for communities um, that are facing the adverse impacts um, and damage to their health and human rights caused by fossil fuel companies and other contributors to climate change. Thank you.